Welcome back to another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. I'm your host, Gary Malewski, and the publisher of Cyber Defense Magazine. Sitting in my hot seat today is a very special guest from an amazing company. It's Udi Levy, and he is the co-founder and CEO of Cobwebs Technologies, found at cobwebs.com. And we're going to talk about artificial intelligence-powered open source intel and stopping the bad guys in new ways and getting one step ahead of the next breach, just leveraging publicly available data. This is awesome. Udi, welcome to the hot seat. Thank you, Gary. I'm delighted to be here. So you do something so different from any cybersecurity company uh, you know, I've ever bumped into. Can you tell our viewers and listeners what you do and how you do it? So great. We are uh, Cobalt Technologies. I'm the co-founder and the CEO. Uh, we've been in the market for almost eight years now. So we've been working worldwide with public safety organizations, uh, with corporate, with financial institutions in order to provide protection either for communities, organizations, and of course, our people, our nations. Now, governments even use and leverage, and law enforcement leverage some of your capabilities. Yeah, of course. You know, in the past five or 10 years, there has become like a great revolution of open source intelligence because all the information is out there on the web. And today, this information is also a fertile ground for illegal activities, for anti money laundering. Uh, for fraud activities, uh, for physical uh, and digital uh, risks. So what we provide is an agnostic, automated, AI-powered uh, technology in order to provide our customers with the ability to protect either their organizations or their communities uh, in a very efficient and, uh, as I said, AI-powered way. But your method, for example, for threat hunting is so different from what's out there. Traditional, you know, I found a piece of new malware. Let's you know, defang it and figure out the indicators of compromise. You keep an eye on bad guys from the surface web, social media, all the way down to the deep dark web, which is a different and kind of missing angle from what normal threat hunters go after. Yeah, because, you know, originally in the past years, all the threats were taken care of from the inside of the organization, which means you gather information from your internal security organization, from your computers, from your servers, and on and on and on. But today, the external perimeter, which is the web, all the layers of the web, uh, has become uh, the most, I would say, the significant part of attacks. And once you have uh, the visibility to the external perimeter, uh, you can really gain uh, insights which you could have not gained before because everything is out there. I can give you many examples, but let's say that I'm an organization, yeah? So I have all my assets exposed out there. It can be my emails, my domains, my employees' data. It can be leakage of documents. It can be my executive information, which is out there. It can be accounts that the threat actors are trying to impersonate them, and on and on and on and on. And even your IP exposure and all the technical infrastructure, which is exposed out there on the web. So essentially, in the past, I would say five years, this whole field of uh, threat intelligence, AI-powered, web intelligence and digital investigations uh, has become the most essential part of any type of a digital investigation or physical investigation. And of course, uh, for threats monitoring. What we provide is the ability to automate all this process. Uh, in contrary to traditional uh, I would say solutions, which rely on human analysts to really dig into all the information, to scour the dark web, to try to connect the dots. And there are many, many dots out there. It can be technical data like IP or domains or additional data like locations and any, any other uh, type of objective that can pose a, a risk to your organizations if you're a corporate or a financial institutions or to a public safety organization if you wanna protect your communities. So what we provide is automation end to end uh, without any need for human power. So uh, we provide uh, our customers the ability to really be more efficient and to gain operational success. For example, investigation, the threats monitoring that would have been taken maybe for several months can now take five minutes. How? Because of the use of AI. Now, when I say AI, it's not like a, a generic AI, it's real AI, which means the ability to process unstructured data, textual data, images, videos, the ability to find patterns within a sea of information. All these capabilities have become essential 
and it's feasible today to conduct it. And this is how we operate, providing it AI powered all along the way from the moment a threat, an external threat is identified to the moment that we can deconstruct the fingerprints and really conduct a deeper identity resolution over it. And even in financial institutions, some of these threats are insiders, malicious insiders. You can detect that as well, can't you? Yeah, of course. A financial institution is a very, I would say, a, they are exposed to so many risks because from one end, they need to protect their customers, but from the other end, their organization as well, because all the time, threat actors are trying to you know, get money eventually this way or another. So for financial institutions, they cope with several different types of criminal activities, such as, for example, money laundering. Let's say that there is a company now, and eventually it's a shell company, and behind this company are maybe several people which are posing a risk. Maybe they are somewhere in sanctions list, or maybe they are provided in some risk entity database. So in order to automate this process and to provide a combination with static data, which is in the financial institution, such as the bank, with the external data, because in the web, the web is dynamic. Every day you have new information. So if you are able to really conduct a continuous a risk protection, a continuous digital risk protection and risk analysis. Uh, this is uh, where we come very, very handy because we provide the whole dynamic world of the web, which you know is comprised from so many risks, and combine it with the internal information of this uh, financial institution or other uh, organization. So I would just say that yes, financial institutions are really uh, they have a real necessity for these kind of solutions today. And let's say there's a public gathering over some government issue, you would be able to help a government agency be aware of, you know, potential criminals, physical threats, as well as network threats. In its essence, it's fully automated. So let's say I am an analyst, either in law enforcement uh, or public sector, or I don't know, some uh, financial authority. He will use this system right now to start, for example, monitoring the dark web. He can use uh, different types of criteria, of objectives to figure out what exactly uh, there is. Maybe uh, his assets, you want to protect his assets and assets are, are comprised from lists of keywords, from lists of risk entities, maybe from vendors. Maybe he wants to find a continuous risk of vendor of third party risk. Maybe someone now is trying to engage with the organization and uh, eventually he poses some risk that uh, you don't know about. So eventually uh, today an automated solution like ours which is AI powered. And when I say AI, it means all along the way, starting from gathering the information into the customer uh, for the customer usage, but also analyzing it and providing insights in real time, connectivity of information, design patterns, uh, risk analysis, and any other type uh, of, uh, I would say of AI powered analytics. We all the time, our R&D all the time is searching or new uh, technologies in order to benefit our customers with it. And you really have to do this with really brilliantly developed artificial intelligence because you're talking about, I'm assuming, constant flows of terabytes of data and big data lakes that have to be analyzed in real time. And for a human being to sift through all that and try to figure out, you know, this bad actor A is communicating with this bad actor B, and now they're doing something on the dark web with their friend C, that's, that's a lot of work to find that in the in the terabytes of data that's available, isn't it? Yeah, of course. If I want to provide some kind of a metaphor, how it evolved, I'll give you, like, for example, the computer science world. Maybe 20 years ago, in order to really you know, understand how to use computers, you would need to be some kind of a hacker or a student or a doctor or whatever. But today, everybody can use it. In our case, it's the same. Several years ago, in order to really investigate or to find these kind of threats, it would require lots of manual work. but there is so much information out there, oceans of data, and many of work is not relevant anymore. So there is a growing need for AI-powered solutions, and the tedious tasks of the analysts, of the investigators, has become also almost impossible uh, to provide. Therefore, everybody, like, he has to become an expert in investigations or an expert in threat monitoring, but in a very short time. So how do you fill this gap using solutions like ours, which don't require from you any technical knowledge. You don't need to be an expert on uh, cyber threats hunting or an expert on cybersecurity or uh, an expert maybe on digital forensics because the software does most of the work for you. 
you need to understand what you want to look for, what are your goals to get it. And essentially that's it to understand, of course, the material, but you don't really need to be a programmer. You don't really, really need to understand the bit and bytes uh, of a huge uh, big data database or to understand really how AI works, but you just need to know your material to get the training. And afterwards you can really uh, continue with the system and get your insights and along the way, improve all your capabilities as well. Speaking of making it easy for folks, uh, you have an incredible dashboard and user interface. Yeah, actually we've been uh, working, uh, putting lots of efforts uh, on it. And I'll give you an example. Along the way, when we got more and more customers, we understand that uh, different customers require different dashboards. So we decided to provide some kind of a dynamic experience to the user. For example, if you are a user uh, that all what you want is to conduct threat hunting and maybe identity resolution of threat actors, you will have this canvas, you will have this link analysis, you can click on a point, go to another one, go to another one, and continue your investigation on a visual link analysis. But let's say that you are now a more, I would say, a, a defense a, or some kind of customer which his expertise is in a, in a spatial analysis and geographical analysis. You will have this dashboard of a map. You can work only on a map with layers of information. You can import layers, export layers, combine them, get insights on geographical way. But if you are, for example, a GSOC, a security operator, you can just sit in front of the dashboard and just view alerts get your, understand the risk and decide what you want to resolve, and what you don't want to resolve. You don't need to really work uh, on the solution all day long. So we understood along the way that providing different user experiences uh, is the best way to go because the use cases are so many and uh, with one dashboard, with one way of work, you will not really provide the benefit to all the types of customers. So this is how we operate. All the time we listen to user uh, requirements and try to do our best to fulfill it very quick. And speaking of real-time alerts, do you uh, provide data feeds where maybe I have some seam sim or soar where I'd love to digest an alert related to a threat or a threat actor that could be pulled into that interface? Yeah, sure. Actually, we're doing uh, both sides. I'll explain. Sometimes there are customers that, you know, they're, they're saying, you know, our, your solution, like carbon solution, is what I want to use, only that. Can you import external information from other sources either automatically or by import capabilities? And we do that. But some customers, maybe they have like more solutions, maybe big data analytics. They have the, their world is comprised of other stuff, not only web intelligence, they have lots of internal data, maybe a bank or some kind of uh, these kind of customers. So what we provide is also export capabilities and API capabilities. So we do both ways. Either if a customer wants our solution to be uh, the main one, he can have it, but if, it, if he wants other solution it will be the main one and we provide the feeds to that, it's also possible either through API or automatic export, import, also manual export, export and import. And today it has become a necessity because there are so many tools out there. So of course there is room for other solutions as well to be connected to or from uh, with our solution. That's excellent. So you make it seamless and frictionless to work with what the existing tools are in the SOC and what the team's been using. Also, uh, you, you make it easy to deploy. You, you said you could collect some data and, and provide results pretty quickly compared to you know, weeks, months, or, or years. Yeah, so of course, the deployment uh, is a critical part of what we do. It's cloud deployment. We provide SaaS products, of course, but we are very open to customer requirements. I'll explain. Uh, when you work with the public sector, financial institutions, and also with some corporates, uh, security and privacy protection is the highest uh, measures that, and they need the highest measure for that. So what we did is to comply with all the relevant uh, security measures like SOC 2, and uh, of course uh, to be GDPR compliant and other uh, certificates uh, as well. And of course the government cloud compliant, for example, because eventually uh, the deployment, we do it you know, today in one click, but it's complex because if you want to secure the information and if you want your customer to work in a compliant way, and to know that you can trust uh, the solution end to end, not only from the data perspective, but also from the privacy protection perspective, and also for the security perspective. As I see it, the combination of big data analytics, cloud deployment, and AI over the big data analytics, uh, it really provides a, a winning solution. And uh, the combination of, of all these three, I would say, uh, technologies 
uh, can really provide you scalability, uh, automation, uh, a way to work, uh, which wasn't you know, possible a few years ago. Cobwebs Technology is a very unique company. Is it sole direct or do you, do you want to help MDR providers or MSSPs or MSPs around the globe to, to augment their offerings so that they can go to their clients and say, I've got something very valuable and unique that, you know, I haven't seen anything like this. So, uh, yeah, of course, we sell direct, we sell with partners. I believe in partners, but I also believe direct. The world is big and there is enough uh, space and enough uh, customers for everybody, either for us, also for other solutions and for partners. So all the time we're open to partners and we're already partnering with other big technology companies, uh, as you can see in uh, our websites. Is there anything that we haven't covered yet that you'd like to share with our viewers and listeners? The web is controlling our life, whether we like it or not. Every aspect of our life, uh, of our kids' life, of our uh, neighbors, of our companies. And uh, we need to maintain uh, all the time the security and all the time to understand uh, the need for solutions like ours to protect uh, communities or to protect organizations, because eventually it's about us. We need to feel uh, protected when we go in this world, when we go to work, when we work with, within our organization. And the web is a big space, it's a very big space, and they have many layers. And the tools like Cobwebs can really provide a benefit in order to, you know, to maintain a bit safer world for all of us. So we are very proud that this is our mission, and hopefully we succeed in it, to provide a safer world for all of us and for organizations, safer organizations, because eventually it goes back to us, a safer environment for all of us. Udi Levy, you are the co-founder and CEO of Cobwebs Technologies at cobwebs.com. You are a market leader in your field. In fact, I haven't bumped into any companies that do what you do. So green pastures for you, great opportunities to help global communities, government agencies, financial institutions to get one step ahead of the next threat in one of the most unique ways I've ever seen. So folks, go to his website, learn more at cobwebs.com, and then come back next time for another exciting episode of Cyber Defense TV. Cyber Defense TV and Cyber Defense Radio have launched 24 by 7 by 365 live streams. Visit them online today at cyberdefense.tv and cyberdefense.radio with your host and globally recognized cybersecurity expert and my good friend, Gary Malewski.